guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is all about resume tips for new medical coders who have no experience. If you're brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. Okay guys, so I got this comment from a viewer. I'm gonna read the comment and then we're gonna get into it. So, here we go and thank you to the viewer who made the comment. They said, is it supposed to be entry level MBC or MBC specialist? Also, can I write no experience? And I told them, please don't write that. <laughs> please don't write no experience. Here's the thing, guys. Your resume is a big deal. You cannot be lackadaisical with your approach to this resume. You have to give it your all. It ideally should be on one page, no more than two pages, okay? One page, no more than two. Please don't be like these people I see on LinkedIn who have a four or five page resume and then they're complaining that no one is calling them back. No one is calling you back because you have a terrible resume. Your resume is going to be the thing that speaks for you before the employer even meets you. So if that resume is not in order, you're not going to be met <laughs> because of the simple fact that a lot of times these employers are looking, okay, this person is going to be what we need because they have all the skills that we need. They already know based on your work history that you have no experience. So number one, let's not call it to their attention. All right. They can see that they can read. Okay. So you keep your resume on one, no more than two pages. And we are not going to go back more than 10 or 15 years. So if you've had multiple jobs and you, you know, have a 20, 25 year work history, 30 year work history, we only need to see the last 10 to 15 years, whatever's going to keep it onto one page, no more than two pages. Okay. That's what we want. All right. And if you were someplace for a very short amount of time, I wouldn't waste time talking about something that I was at a place for a very short amount of time. Okay. Like a month. No guys. No. Uh, because what did you accomplish there in a month? And that's going to raise more questions about, why didn't you last longer than a month? You know what I'm saying? So think about what you're writing on this resume. Now, yes, they are going to run background checks. They are going to do all of these things. But this resume is going to be just so that they can get to know you. That's going to be your first connection. And so whatever you write on this resume, you want it to be meaningful for your job. You want it to be meaningful for the position that you want. Okay? So... 10 or more than 15 years back, no more than 15 years back. Okay. I'm just saying. So that being said, one to two pages, 10 or more than 15 years back. Now let's look at your jobs. Now, if you've had a gap in your, in your work history, let's just say for instance, you're a stay at home mom, you know, and, or a stay at home dad, you know, stay at home parent. And you say, well, you know, I've stayed at home. I haven't been working you know, because I've, I've been just taking care of the kids. That's actually a job, guys. <laughs> that is a job. Taking care of children, taking care of um, elderly parents, that is work because you are taking care of another human being. You're not just taking care of yourself, but you're taking care of their needs, okay? So think about that in terms of what, how is that gonna translate over to what we do in medical coding, which what do we do in medical coding? We protect private um, health information, we ensure confidentiality. We, um, we know our numbers and letters, obviously. So if you can put on there uh, about your experience with your caregiving, you know, if, you're, if you were doing caregiving, then you want to make sure that it's stuff that's going to be translatable to what we do in health information. So think of it like that, guys. Think of it along those lines, all right? The other thing is this. If you've been a member of the PTA, you can write that down because obviously you didn't announce the students that you were serving, right? So you protected them. You protected their information. You helped out. Did you help out with the fundraisers? Well, okay, there we go with money that you have to handle money when you do that. And if you're doing that, if you're applying for a medical biller position because you're still trying to get into medical coding, that cash handling experience, that money handling experience is going to go a long way to getting you, okay, in the door through billing. Sometimes medical coders start off in billing and there's nothing wrong with that. So if you start off your journey as a coder, as a biller, 
and maybe you were on the PTA or maybe you were a volunteer with your church and maybe you collected the tithings and you had to count all that money. So again, that's stuff that can be added to your resume, okay? Even though it's a volunteer position, even though it is something that you just spend your time in, you know, doing as a, as a member of that community, it's still okay because it's still something that you're doing, all right? But you have to present it in a way that, again, is going to support your wanting to get into this position and um, the things that you possess, the skills that you possess. So if maybe when you were on the, uh, the PTA council, <laughs> you know, you were able to de-escalate situations that's part of the things that you can add on there um, on your duties, right? Because you're, you're going with bullet points, okay? You, do, you never, ever want to have your resume have like paragraphs, okay? Words all together and everything. No, it just looks messy and, and just disorganized and out of control. You want things, bullet points. You want um, concise language. You want it right to the point. You do not want to waste time with... Um, uh, I was personally responsible for, no, guys, don't do that. Don't, don't dress it up. What did you do? What was your skill? Did you have to do any kind of training to other employees? Okay. This shows, um, initiative. This shows that you, you know, you know, okay, well, if I, um, have this employee and they need help, you know, I'm able to do that. That shows teamwork. You don't have to write that down as your skill. Okay. And that brings me to another thing. <laughs> Let's talk about the skills list, okay, for a second here. Because this is the thing that gets on my nerves the most when I see it on LinkedIn. Somebody who has a whole section of all their skills. And all their skills, there's like 20 or 30 skills. Guys, do not write 20 or 30 skills. That is ridiculous, okay? You want a quarter of that. <laughs> That's it, okay? And you want things right to the point. Do not put on your skills list organized team player, uh, answer phones, um, a smiling face. Don't ever put any of those things on there. Because if I see those and I'm a hiring manager, right? If I, if I am a hiring manager, that's immediately going to be rejected. Why? Because you don't know what skills we need to see as people who are hiring for health information um, positions. You know, whether it's coding or, or anything else, auditors or whatever. We want to know what are your skills. And you ask, Blue, what are the skills? What are employers looking for? That's why you have to look at the job listing. What does the job listing say? ICD-10 CM. And do not, <laughs> do not put on there ICD-10 or ICD-10 slash, um, ICD-10 CM slash PCS. Because if you do, that looks lazy. And to me, if I'm a hiring manager, again, immediate rejection. Now, you may be thinking, well, gosh, well, that's mean. No, what it shows is immediately what these employers are seeing. And trust me, there's a lot of people out there that have a lot more stricter standards than I do when it comes to those things. But I'm looking at the details. I'm looking at the fact that you put on the same line, ICD-10 CM slash PCS, or heaven forbid you put just ICD-10. Uh, again, if I see ICD-10, I'm rejecting it because you're not telling me which one it is. ICD-10 CM or ICD-10 PCS or both. And you cannot just assume that I know that you're only referring to ICD-10 CM for like the diagnosis, right? I cannot assume that. So I want you to tell me what is it that you know, ICD-10 CM. The next line, if you know ICD-10 PCS, ICD-10 PCS. CPT, Hicks, Picks. Each one of these should go on its own line because each one of these is unique and special to unto itself, right? What else do they say that they're looking for? That you have to be proficient in medical terminology, anatomy, and pathophysiology, right? And if you see that in the job listings, guys, that's what they're looking for. They're not looking for all this other riffraff, you know? If you know things for um, Microsoft Office, right? Uh, Outlook, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, all those good things. Again, that's what you want on there. Um, that doesn't have to be on separate lines. <laughs> they can be on the same line. Um, but you want to make sure that you are putting things on there that are relevant to what that job listing is saying. So sometimes you may have to update your resume, take things in, take things out, 
um, as you see fit for every single place that you're applying. And if they're saying that they are looking for a medical records technician on your objective statement, because yes, all brand new medical coders should have an objective statement on their resume. Now, before anybody starts arguing with me, I am a professional resume writer. <laughs> uh, I do write resumes. My calendar is currently booked and I will not be accepting any new clients until January 2024. Um, but my resumes have been successful and I do use a objective statement uh, for my resumes. Why? Because the, uh, the objective statement is going to tell the employer exactly what you want and what you're looking for and what you're bringing to the table in two to three sentences period okay so if you're telling me well no i heard that you know such and such said that we don't need that okay so if there's a uh, job right there's an organization that's hiring and they have quite a few positions that are open and you just send in your resume what are you looking for and don't assume that i know that this resume is attached to this application for this position. Do not assume that. I may be looking at a resume and thinking, okay, well, this person would be really great for, you know, this type of position or this type of position, but that's not what they're, you know what I'm saying? I don't know what they want and I'm not going to guess for you. Okay. So you put on there, um, what job you're applying for at that particular organization, because in the job, um, the job title specifically the way that it is in the job listing needs to be in your resume that way as well because this says that one you have attention to detail <laughs> two when it's um, the scanner is looking at it it is looking for those recognizable words okay well we see that this has this these words in it okay these are all the things that we're looking for um, and oh yes here is the job position that this is for okay so we're gonna go ahead and send this resume on to the next human to look at it. And so then they go from there. So that's why I say, you know, you have to be able to get past that scanner thing first, right? And you have to make sure that what you write on there is appropriate for that particular position. Don't get um, lazy when it comes to not changing your resume. A lot of people will even write to me complaining that, oh, well, um, I have to do that for every single one. Do you want to get a job or not? Because no one's going to hold your hand on this part. <laughs> no one will hold your hand. So make sure that you are updating your resume to reflect the job that you want at that particular place. Okay. So again, you want to make sure you're looking at the job listing and everything that they're asking for. If you possess those skills, that needs to be on your skills list. Okay. Your skills does not need to be no 20 or 30 things. Okay. And it does not need to be everything is repeated right because i see that medicare part a b c and d right and then they say oh ncd lcd guys come on you know what i'm saying so if you are already putting on there that you know about medical billing okay fine great you learned that in the school is it for commercial or government insurance that's what you want to specify next to that okay you could put that all in the same line and so that's something that you want to make sure that you're including on there not piecemealing the whole thing right you want to make sure everything is to the point and right where it needs to be. So that's what you want to do for your skills list. And again, if we can get this down to one page, no more than two pages, then you're already doing great. And again, if you have had multiple jobs and let's just say you did the same type of position, maybe you were a cashier and then you're putting the same description for every single job, that's wrong because as a, as a manager, you know, right? If, if I'm a hiring manager, I'm going to know that you did different things at different places. So change up the things that you are seeing on there, right? So that way they know that, okay, you did different things. What else did you do, right? Compared to what you did at your last place, okay? So that's what you want. You want to make sure that you are being descriptive, but you are being very concise with your words and right to the point <laughs> because you don't want to sit there and waste the employer's time they scan these and they just look at them really quick and if you start getting into big old paragraphs about what you did and it looks like the same thing over and over again oh no i would i would reject it too okay so again it's it's very quick that they'll just like toss yours off to the side because they've got hundreds of people sometimes applying for these jobs 
So you don't want to be part of that cut pile right away. You want to make sure that you get your chance. So make sure that when you have your resume, that it looks good, everything looks great. Do a cover letter. The cover letter is very important. Now that cover letter is where you can say that you're organized, you're, you, that you're a team player and things like that. It does not need to be a whole life story, okay? A cover letter is going to be um, your, your opening paragraph, which is basically going to say like uh, what position that you're applying for. Your middle paragraph, like why you would make a good fit, that's when you start talking about your soft skills. It's not going to be a regurgitation of what's on your resume because your resume is there. It's going to speak for itself. That cover letter is going to be the humanistic draw that is going to say, okay, well, I'm a team player. I do this and, you know, I'm organized and that kind of thing because those are your soft skills and that you could talk about that there. Then it's going to be your closing uh, paragraph where it's not like, oh, I hope to hear from you. No, you're not going to give them that, oh, that choice. You but instead you say, I get excited when I talk about resumes, uh, it, but instead you say, I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Okay, that's more um, definitive, more decisive, uh, more, more sure of yourself than, oh, I hope to hear from you. No, you know, uh, don't do that. You need to be as direct and upfront. This is what I have to offer because no one has time to do any of that coddling or anything like that. So. You want to make sure that you're very direct with that. And that's what I would recommend. And also, when you have your name on your resume, you need to put your credentials next to your name. Do not leave it to chance that, oh, yeah, they're going to look at your credentials part and then, oh, yeah, that's where your credentials are listed. No, don't do that. You want to make sure that you have your name, comma, and then your credentials. Okay, so you're going to go with the credential that weighs the most, technically, <laughs> um, that has the most on it. And then you're going to go from there. For example, for, for me, I put the CCS first and then the CCSP because the CCS covers inpatient and outpatient coding. And, um, the CCSP just covers outpatient coding. So that's why I put it on my name that way. Uh, because that's just the way that it is, you know? Uh, but you know, if you have like degrees and things like that, you always want to make sure the degrees go first then, <laughs> you know, then your credentials. Uh, if you have your RHIA, your RHIA would go first, the CCS, then the CCSP, okay? If you had it like that. Um, and some people don't know that. They'll put their medical coding credentials first, and then they'll put their, like, if they have an RN or something like that, and that's wrong. Um, the RN should always go first because of, just because of the seniority of the, um, of the credentials, you know, and an RN is a license, so that's something that's different. <laughs> uh, but that's just my advice there anyway. Uh, when it comes to your resume, there's so many things that you can do with it. It's so versatile in the way that you can set it up. There's lots of templates out there that you can use. Um, I do not recommend copying the um, very The very poorly written <laughs> medical coding uh, a template that's out there, I do not recommend uh, copying that um, because if I'm a hiring manager and I see that template that you're using and that it's the same as all these other uh, medical coders who don't want to write their own, that would be an immediate rejection. You would never get a chance with that one. Okay. And it is out there. You know, I'm not going to tell you where it is because it's out there. <laughs> People Google it all the time. Uh, it's just not very good. And I see a lot of it on LinkedIn, especially. And I, I recognize the template. I'm like, that's just so poorly written. I would, I would never, I would never, unless I knew that person, I would never look at what they have to say because you didn't put in the effort to write your own resume or think of something for yourself or even get somebody to write it for you. You know, uh, yes, it is a little bit more expensive when you have somebody writing your resume, but it is um, an investment in you. And you wanna make sure that whoever you get to write your resume, because yes, there are professional resume writers out there, but are they active medical coders? And that's what sets me apart too, whenever I do resumes for people and they come to me, because they know I'm a medical coder. So I speak <laughs> medical coder, whereas like these other resume writers who are just professional resume writers that 
just put things together because they use templates. Um, they are using the same thing. Okay, well, this person does this. Okay, well, I'll just change it a little bit here and there. And guys, if they're not actually doing what we do, they're not going to understand those details that need to be there. They're not going to understand the things that, that employers are going to be looking for when they're looking for coders. Okay, so that's something that you want to pay attention to. And, you know, oh, well, it was cheap. Well, if it's cheap, then you get what you pay for, right? I'm just saying. Uh, but make sure that if you spend a little bit more money that you um, look at all the things that they offer, you know, what is it that they're offering and that kind of thing. So that's just something that you ought to know. But anyway, <laughs> um, I, I like resumes. And when I see people asking this, um, I don't really like the abbreviation MBC. I don't like it. I'd never have uh, because I think that you can't spell it out, <laughs> you know, and do you want to do both positions? Do you want to do billing and coding? Because most of the time you're either just doing the billing or you're just doing the coding unless you want to do both. And for some smaller practices, they have one person that does both. But that's a lot to put on one person because the coding is a lot. The billing is a lot. And then you want to combine the two. And again, that goes back to um, an employer or an organization not really understanding what we do as coders. And do you really want to work in a place like that? You know, it's a lot. Yes. <laughs> But it's just something that you have to decide for yourself. Some people are happy to do it that way and they're okay with it. And then others would be like, okay, yeah, I need to really look at the job description and what it's asking for. So with that said, that's going to be my show for today. Uh, but look at what you're writing and take it seriously. There's lots of really helpful articles out there about writing resumes. So I encourage you to all you all to look for those things uh, because it will help you, but you just have to do your research. Or you can always go to the public library and check out a book about writing resumes. I'm just saying. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up. Thank you guys so much for joining me. If this video helped you, please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see y'all next time. Bye.